Hello, Internet. My name is Ryan Ingram, and today we're going to be talking about real estate investing for beginners. And to keep this succinct and really exactly on point, we're going to be using the basic storytelling questions, the who, what, when, where, why, and how for real estate investing. All right. Now, I know this is a little cheesy with these questions, but I think it's really going to help us fly through, stay on point, and really just nail down exactly it is that we're talking about. So let's let's start with the who. So who should be a real estate investor? You should, for starters. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit biased, but I think everybody needs to be a real estate investor. I think the less money you have, the more quickly, the more urgently you need to pursue these answers. Real estate is a phenomenal tool. We're gonna get into that a little bit later. Anybody can build an extraordinary amount of wealth via real estate. I also don't want to set an age limit on who should invest in real estate. I think anybody can. I think if you are in your 60s, you're about to retire, you still should buy several properties. It would actually be easier for you because you have more, a larger network and more resources available to you. I think if you're 18, now you can legally sign contracts. One of the first things you need to do is go out and buy a home, a specific type of home, but nonetheless a home. If you're under 18, well, you might need a parent or guardian to help you uh, create accounts, sign contracts, and all of that, but it's doable and you should do it. If you don't have a parent that's on board or a guardian on board, then do as much research as you can uh, before you turn 18 so that as soon as you do, you can hit the ground running and start making really wise incredible decisions to help build an extraordinary amount of wealth as quickly as possible. Are you comfortable on who? If you're not, comment below. We could talk about it. But until then, let's erase this bad boy. Now, if you've made it this far and you're new to the channel and you're wondering to yourself, who is this Ryan Ingram fella? Well, let me tell you. Over the past two years, my brother and I, we purchased our first rental property in August of 2017. That was a duplex. And we currently have over 63 doors. Primarily, those are single family homes. However, we do have a few duplexes and a four unit. And in those properties, we've been able to create or generate over a million dollars worth of equity. Now, that statement deserves some clarification. This is not money in our bank account. This is just value that we've created inside of those homes. So again, if you're new, subscribe to the channel where I'm gonna be going over all of these deals in detail exactly how i did it how i financed them how i found them and you can too but now let's go back to learning about real estate investing for beginners what is real estate investing so real estate investing is purchasing any sort of land commercial property uh vacant property let's see here any sort of distressed home so a lot of what i know is on the residential aspects of real estate investing. As I mentioned earlier, the majority of my portfolio is in single family homes. I have a few duplexes and multifamilies, but I have nothing larger than a four unit. But there are two main types of real estate investing. You could actually be the one that purchases the property, or you could be the one that lends money to somebody that wants to purchase the property. So both of those, in my opinion, are considered to be real estate investing. The main points as to why you would want to be a lender is that you would most likely get a higher rate of return than historical stock market averages. In our portfolio, we have private lenders. Our lowest loan is 8% and our highest loan is 13.6%. Percentage doesn't matter. I get a lot of kickback whenever people hear that I borrow money at 13.6%. But if you watch some of the Deals Explained videos, you'll see why I do that and the numbers really make sense. Now, if you're going to be the one that buys the property, again, you could buy land, residential property, and commercial property. My area of expertise is right here on the residential. I'm not going to be able to talk too well about land or commercial, but just know that there are a lot more options as far as investing in real estate. Just because I am an expert here in the residential area doesn't mean that that is what you should do. You should thoroughly research all of these types prior to making your decision. And inside of commercial real estate, just as there are tons of vacant properties, flipping properties, 
single family homes, multi duplexes, four units, uh, five and up large apartment complexes, all of that that people live in, there's just such a broad array as to far as like what you can invest in. Commercial is no different. You could buy strip malls, warehouses, actual malls. There's really no limit on what you could do inside of real estate investing. Did that clear it up? Let's get it out of here. You already knew what real estate investing was, but hey, I'm happy we got to talk about it for a few seconds. All right, now let's talk about when. When should you invest in real estate? Well, I gotta tell you, I think you should invest in real estate as soon as possible, ASAP. Now I had to write that really big just to get my point across. Shortly hereafter you watch this video, you need to start taking actionable steps to invest in real estate, either by purchasing properties yourself or lending money. Now one of my favorite, I think it's a Chinese proverb, it's uh, the best time to plant a tree was 100 years ago, the second best time is today. That's the exact same in real estate investing. I've got another video called The Wealth Formula. You should check it out. What this is, is about how to calculate the future value of a dollar. Pretty much the whole um, summary of it is the younger you are, the more time you have on your side. So you're gonna be able to make $1 turn into several hundred dollars. Whereas if you're older, sure, you have less time, but you also have more assets, resources, and experience that you can use to more quickly escalate your real estate investing career. The best time when you should invest in real estate is today, is right now, after this video. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, after you get done watching this video, reach out to me. I'll put my email in the description below so that you could send me any questions or you could just comment them, whatever's best for you. Where? This is one of the coolest parts about real estate. In my market, sure, I get great returns. One of the rules of thumbs that's uh, commonly accepted or talked about in the real estate investing community is the 2% rule. In the market that I'm in, I can hit deals at the 2% mark and even higher. However, in other markets like California, Seattle, um, anything close to anything tech related, you can't get 2%. You'd be lucky to get 1%. You'd be lucky to break even on cash flow, but that doesn't really matter because you can invest in real estate wherever you want to. There are a few books out there about how to invest um, in places that aren't in your backyard. So you can be what's called an out of state investor. You could live in California and on the insurance side, I have a lot of, Cal of investors from California that are clients that have rental properties here in Ohio. You can live in Colorado, invest in New Mexico, wherever there is a property, you could invest there. So one of the excuses that I hear a lot when I'm talking about uh, investing here in Ohio is people want to complain that where they live, the returns aren't nearly as high. And that's okay, it really doesn't matter. You can take your money elsewhere. Now, sure, if you choose to invest in somewhere where you aren't physically, you need to take some safety precautions. You need to make sure you really do your due diligence. You need to come out here a few times and find people that you trust, that you truly believe will have your best interest. That way you don't accidentally end up losing everything. Because unfortunately, just like all things in life, there are some crazy horror stories that out-of-state investors will tell you property managers running off with all your money, inspectors completely missing things, the list goes on and on. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to have a team of trusted advisors in whatever area you choose to invest in. You really need to make sure that you do your due diligence, but the whole point is you could invest wherever you'd like. Are you satisfied with that? Just don't come get all the deals here in Ohio. Why should you invest in real estate? Well, that's a phenomenal question of which there are an extraordinary amount of answers. I'm gonna go over six of these. I'm gonna write all of them here on the board. And so you don't have to bear through that, I'm gonna fast forward this. But hey, enjoy watching me be left-handed. I've gotten a weird amount of comments on that. So thanks people for noticing and caring.
So here are my six main reasons for why you should invest in real estate. The first one is appreciation. So this isn't talking about the cash flow, uh, the expenses, or anything like that. This is just talking strictly about the value of the property that you purchase. Now, a lot of people want to talk about the stock market and the historical rates of return. So this is the most comparable thing, in my opinion, to the historical return of the stock market is also the historical appreciation of any particular market. So if you choose to invest somewhere, let's say Philadelphia, then you can use a, f a few websites or tools to figure out the historical rate of appreciation of the single family homes inside of Philadelphia. Now multifamily is a little bit different because multifamily is kind of evaluated on the performance of the property and you can actually force appreciation, which is pretty cool. But with single families, you can just look at that historical rate of appreciation. Historically, nationwide, on average, the rate of return or the rate of appreciation of properties is 4%. So let's say you buy a rental property for $100,000. That means the following year, 12 months later, it has a high probability of now being worth $104,000. So that is your 4% rate of appreciation. Um, again, that's historical. That's something that when I calculate rental properties, I don't rely on that. I don't uh, even include that or factor that in uh, when I purchase the properties. I buy my properties primarily based on cash flow, but that has a lot to do with the market that I'm in. If you're in an area like California who's experiencing appreciation rates much higher than 4%, it might make sense to base things off appreciation. But again, kind of like stock markets, I view that as being kind of speculative. But hey, just one man and just one man's opinion. You can do whatever you'd like. The cash flow, that's where I get really excited. So let's say you buy a property, uh, it rents out for $800 per month. You could watch one of the Deals Explained videos where I go through all of the numbers. But let's say your mortgage is $200 per month, your taxes are $100 per month, your insurance is $100 per month. Then after all of your expenses, you're left with $400 per month. This is the cash flow of the property and this is what you're going to be able to add to your bank account uh, once your tenant pays rents and you pay all of your expenses. Now in this number, especially if you don't have too many properties, you're really going to want to focus on the capital expenditures and the repairs and maintenance. Huh. I think I've also recorded a video on that. You might want to watch that one too. That would be fun. This third reason why you should invest in real estate is for principal pay down. So let's go back over here. Let's say your mortgage payment on this property is $200. Now let's say you put 50,000, you purchased this rental property for $50,000. Let's say you put 25% down, which is 12,500. So you've got a loan balance of 38,500. So this is the principal. Of course, every mortgage is also gonna charge you interest, so for just a high level, these aren't real numbers. Let's just say uh, for each year, this is $150 of this goes to principal. So in this, you have $150 that goes to principal, and then you have $50 that goes to interest. Now, this is also why a lot of people refer to rental properties or even to their homes as forced savings. So this principal amount is gonna come over here and immediately address this. So after the first month, you would only owe $38,350. So each month that goes by, you're gonna have $150 go towards the principal payment. And remember, this is not your money. This is the tenant's money because the $800 that they pay you per month, that is what pays the mortgage payment which pays the principal and the interest, and the principal pays down your loan balance. So all that to say it goes into your back pocket in the background without you being the wiser, because you're so focused on all of these things, all of the capital expenditures, repairs and maintenance being addressed, the tenants staying happy. That's your main focus. So honestly, you forget about the principal pay down. 
So then, let's say this goes on for two years. Well, $150 per month, that's $1,800 per year. So, you know what? Let's do longer than two years because that would only be $3,600. Let's take this all the way out to 10 years from now. You pay off $18,000. Well, now your principal balance on the property is only $20,500. Now this is where it gets really fun because if you wanted to, you could go to a bank, refinance, you could pull out all of the principal that you paid down and on top of that, you could probably pull out more money because of appreciation. So for that 10 years, if the average rate is 4%, then your property would increase around 40% in value. So this $50,000 home that you purchased increased by 40%. So now the property is worth $70,000. So the appreciation in this example made you 20 grand over 10 years and you paid the property down by $18,000 uh, over 10 years. So you made on this one property that you purchased for 50,000 that you put a tenant in, you provided a home for a family for over 10 years. And now in this example, you added $38,000 to your net worth if you don't refinance and take any of this money out. That's really cool, right? Now just imagine for a second if you had several of these going on in the background all the time. This is why real estate investing is such a good idea and why owning several properties, especially rental properties, because none of this is your money. You don't have to do anything on a daily or monthly basis in order to benefit from this. Now sure, you're still going to have property management and you're going to have to address any sort of maintenance on the property, but man, we're talking about 38 grand over 10 years. That's over $3,800 per month. And I recently just read an article where the average American household's income is $39,000. Excuse me, $3,900 per month. So this is like a full extra month of income that you're creating just by owning one property that you purchased for $50,000. It's crazy, right? Invest in real estate as quickly as possible. Now back to this pretty little list that I've created. We've talked about the appreciation, the cash flow, the principal pay down. Now let's talk about the tax benefits. So I am not a CPA. I'm just little old Ryan Ingram. I'm just a dude that wants to convince you to invest in real estate. But the tax benefits that I know of, uh, depreciation, that's the biggest one. A lot of people um, use this and then you'll hear uh, one of the things that I knew about real estate early on was I thought that it was just like this, uh, this money pit for rich people to kind of depreciate so they don't show as much income. I had a really high level and wrong view of depreciation. But let's say, again, back to this $50,000 property example, you're able to depreciate that over 28 and a half years. So that $3,800 that, that we mentioned that you'd be making, uh, you would also be depreciating so your first few years of real estate investing, you're actually going to show as negative on your tax return. So if you make $50,000 a year, you own this one rental property that you purchased for $50,000, you're going to depreciate that now over the next 28 and a half years. Now that's going to be counted against your income. So you on paper would only show forty-seven or forty-eight thousand dollars of income because you were depreciating the first year of purchasing this property. Again, I'm not a CPA. I only have a high level understanding of what this is. However, I highly recommend that as soon as you get into real estate, you find just a rock solid CPA and he can explain these things 10 times better than I can. The next reason you should invest in real estate is leverage. So this is really cool and this goes back to this $50,000. This looks ridiculous at this point. I'm sorry. So this property you purchased for $50,000, the only money that left your pocket was the $12,500 down payment. However, you're not only getting 25% of the property, you're getting 100% of the property. So you have the right to all of the rental income 
except for your mortgage and interest payment, which is $200. You have to pay the bank that because they lent you $38,500. However, you're left after all expenses with $400 per month and you only had to put out $12,500. So in this example, you're gonna make $4,800 at the end of the year, which is around 30% of your initial investment. You're still going to have the tax benefit of the full $50,000. You're not going to have the tax benefit of only $38,500. So when you utilize leverage or what people commonly refer to in the real estate world as other people's money, you're really starting to amplify and intensify the personal returns that you get from this. So if you're to do the $4,800 divided by the actual amount of money that you put out, 12,500, you have, <laughs> let me just erase stuff. So your cash flow is $4,800 per year the amount of money that you put out of your pocket is 12,500. So in terms of like your rate of return or your cash on cash return is what it's called, that's 38%. Now what other investment vehicle uh, can you make 38% cash on cash in? And I get that I just made up these numbers, but you can find deals like this all day long uh, here in Ohio. The last reason why you should invest in real estate is it's a hedge against inflation. Now what that means is that real estate, your, both your rental income and the actual property is a hedge against inflation. It doesn't depend, it's not contingent upon the value of a dollar. Your house exists apart from the value of a dollar. So let's say I know the average rate of inflation historically is 3.22%. So even without doing more math than this, we know that the average rate of appreciation is 4% per year. So as the dollar decreases in value by 3.22% per year, your property is increasing in value by a rate of 4% per year. So if you had $100,000 into a property, then the next year, as we discussed, it would be worth 104,000. Now, if you were to have that same $100,000 in a bank account and we use the average rate of inflation of 3.22% per year, that means all the money that's sitting in your bank account is now worth 3.22% less. So that uh, $100,000 is now only worth $96,780. Does that make sense? In addition to the value of your personal money being affected by inflation, your rental income is also going to be offset by that. So now let's also say back to this example of the $800 per month, your rental income is also protected uh, against inflation. Let's just say your lease expires after 12 months. Now you're able to raise the rent, um, the average rate of inflation being at 3.22% your rental income is $800 per month, you could increase your rent by 3.22%, which is $25.76. So now you can charge $825 per month in rent. A $25 increase in rent per month per year is really not hateful. If you guys have ever lived in any of these luxury apartment complexes, you've probably experienced an increase of a few hundred dollars per month after your lease renews. So as a kind of mom and pop landlord with just a few properties, you're not going to really upset your tenants by asking for an extra $25 per month because they have also been the victim of one of these corporate apartment complexes who just ruthlessly raise rents year after year just to keep the cycle of tenants going and to force their appreciation and make their money. Now I'm gonna erase all of this so that we can talk about the last thing, which is the how. How can you get started in real estate investing today? I'll tell you, because I know. 
All right, now this wouldn't be a good internet video at all if I didn't leave you with actionable steps that you should take right now so that you could become more comfortable, uh, more well-educated, and closer to your first real estate deal. So what I did when I first got started, before I bought my property, I started researching rental properties in April of 2017. On average, spent about four hours per day listening to podcasts, reading books, and talking to other people that are investors in the real estate investing community. So some of the first things that you should do is get involved. Now, when I say get involved, what I mean is everywhere has what's called a RIA, and that stands for Real Estate In Investors Association or Real Estate Investing Association. It really doesn't matter. You have one of these locally. You can get onto a website. I'll post that in the description, and you can find a RIA that is local to you. Now, these places probably charge. However, most of them allow you to go a few times for free. You can also use a website, what's called Bigger Pockets. If you don't know anything about real estate investing or you just want to hear or find a place where a lot of other real estate investors are, you should go check this place out. They also have events and you can find a Bigger Pocket event that is hosted by some of the members uh, in your local area. Now, when you go to these meetings and you meet these people in person, you're looking for other people with experience. You want to learn from these people. You want to uh, hear about their mistakes so that you don't have to make them personally. You want to build relationships with the people that you find with this experience. So whenever you find a rental property that you're interested in, you could give one of them a call and you could say, hey, what do you think about this area? What do you think about this property, this price point? What do you think it could rent for? And all of those things. You should also get familiar with the resources that are readily available to you. If you want to know what properties are renting for in your area, you can go on a website called Rentometer, or as I've heard other people call, rentometer.com. This is a website where you can just plug in the address and it will spit out a range of rental rates that are common in your area for that particular style of property. A big one for me is you can read. A lot of the people that you meet here uh, with experience, you can also read from other people with experience. Um, there are a lot of books. People from biggerpockets.com have written several books. You've got a book by John Schwab. It's called Building Wealth One House at a Time. There are just a tremendous amount of books that you could read where people freely and openly share all of their secrets, all of their insights, how they built wealth in real estate investing. Similar to what I'm doing with this channel, I just want to be as transparent, as open, and as helpful as possible so that you could build your real estate investing portfolio and also generate some of that generational wealth to just completely change the trajectory of your family tree. You also need to find a few good realtors, and you also need to find some wholesalers. These are the people that are professionally going out, spending the majority of their day looking for properties that would be good for you to purchase. Wholesalers kind of are completely off market. They don't really utilize the MLS. These guys just put properties under contract and then sell them to other investors without utilizing the MLS. So these guys are good to know. The realtors, they can get you into properties on the MLS. They can tell you their professional opinions about properties. But you want to be careful with the realtors and you really want to find one that's good for other real estate investors or they're a real estate investor themselves. So overall, I would call all of this education. Ooh, that's a rough E. I would say education is the number one thing that you could do today to help you get started in your real estate investing career. You can just stand on the shoulders of all the other real estate investors before you. You can learn from them. You can talk to them. You can build relationships, get their insight on things. You can learn from people. And the more you learn, the more all of this is going to make sense to you and the more you're going to be able to make an educated, wise decision. Because unlike in the stock market, um, you know what? I'm not gonna say that. I'm not familiar enough with the stock market like I am with real estate. But you don't have to, you don't want to lose money in real estate. And if you get the proper education, if you use a bunch of, uh, kind of like a board of directors of all of these industry-specific people, 
then the chances of you losing money or making bad decisions goes down and down and down the more people you allow to look over your shoulder, provide insight into your life, and really, you want to surround yourself with people in the industry with experience that have a vested interest in helping you succeed, which what I found in the real estate investing community is so many people, all of the other real estate investors happily share their information, their knowledge and insight uh, to people that are looking to get into the industry. Because once you're in this, once you have several properties under your belt, you realize that there is no scarcity of single family homes. There's always going to be another home for sale that needs a phenomenal landlord to take good care of the property to provide a wonderful, safe, well-kept home to a family. So what are your thoughts? How can I help you get started in this journey? Look forward to hearing to you soon. And if you want to, again, I urge you to check out all the deals explained where I dive into properties that I purchased myself and explain how I did it, why I did it, and what the financial return is for me. So thanks so much, guys. Can't wait to talk to you again.